Hello everyone, welcome to my talk. My name is Joachim Yap and my group is from Michigan Technological University. Today I would like to talk about emerging applications of boronitride nanotubes for advanced electronics and biomedicine. There are differences between carbon nanotubes and boronitride nanotubes. Just to name a few, carbon nanotubes are metallic or semiconducting and they are useful for electronics and energy storage applications whereas boron nitride nanotubes are wide band gap and they are always electrically insulating therefore they cannot be used for electronics applications these are the disadvantages of boron nitride nanotubes in my lab, boron nitride nanotubes can be synthesized by chemical vapor depositions. There are other approaches for the synthesis of boron nitride nanotubes as reported by others group. From now on, let me give you a few examples of emerging applications of boron nitride nanotubes. Let us get started with transistor without semiconductor. The moderation of this work is due to several fundamental limits of semiconductor transistor, including high contact resistance at the nanoscale semiconducting channel, high power consumptions due to current leakage, as well as the short channel effect where the conduction length approach the scale of the depletion layer width. What we have reported is that we use boron and nanotubes, which has band gap of six electron volt. And of course, they are always electrically insulating. By doing so, we are depositing gold nanoparticle on the surface of boron and nanotubes. And then we trying to probe using two pieces of STM probe on the electronic transport nature across the surface of these boron nitride nanotubes. As you can see, as we decrease the channel length, the current flow versus the bias voltage is start to initiate at lower bias voltages at shorter channel length, which means the short channel effect that being described earlier in conventional transistor is not present here. And we have also demonstrated the gate effect from these devices. Next, let me talk to you about 2D go with optical band gap. This work is very related to the work that we have just discussed, transistor without semiconductor. For example, you can see that here are the gold nanoparticle that we described earlier, where we are using them to demonstrate transistor without semiconductors. And if you look carefully behind at the side wall of the boron nitride nanotubes, we see some very interesting structures. As you zoom in, you can see some gold atom, one atoms here and two pieces of the atoms here, as well as across those where you can see very well crystalline gold atoms aligned in a monolayer manner. According to theoretical simulation that we have performed with our collaborator, we found that two-dimensional gold, which consists of monolayer gold atoms, become more stable compared to the three-dimensional gold crystal when they are absorbed on the surface of hexagonal boron nitride, including those of boron nitride nanotubes. This means 2D gold quantum dots become stable on boron nitride nanotubes. We have used UV visible spectroscopy to characterize the differences between the transmission spectra of pure boron nitride nanotubes indicated by the red curve here 
as compared to those coded with the gold nanoparticle, which is shown by the black curve here. As shown here, when the 2D gold quantum dots are coded on boron nitride nanotubes, we start to see sharp absorption band, which indicating that those gold quantum dots are semiconducting particle with optical band gap in the receiver range. In addition, we also found that the shape and the number of the gold atoms per quantum dot can be moderated by irradiation of electron beam inside the transmission electron microscopy. If you are interested on the growth mechanism of this 2D gold quantum dots, please refer to the published work here. Here are the take home message. 2D gold crystal are less stable than 3D crystal when they are free standing, but they become more stable when they are supported by or supported on the surface of HBN. Monoatomic thick 2D gold can be coated on boron nitride nanotubes thanks to the cylindrical shape of the boron nitride nanotubes. And uh, from UV visible spectra, we found that boron nitride nanotubes coated with 2D gold feature some sharp absorption spike due to the visible light absorption by the cluster. So electrically insulating and optically transparent boron nitride nanotubes have enabled the detection of this crystal. So as in short, 2D gold crystal on BNMPs are the new semiconductors with direct band gap. Next, let us talk about transistor by atomic chains inside boron nitride nanotubes. In collaboration with colleagues in Purdue University, we have constructed transistor by thalidium atomic chains filled inside boron nitride nanotubes, as schematically drawn here. You can see that we can fill the nanotubes down to a diameter of 5 nanometer as well as 2 nanometer indicated here. We have compared the transport properties of thalidium nanowires with thalidium atomic chains filled inside boron nitride nanotubes. As shown here, thalidium nanowires are always p-types in transport nature, as also indicated in this graph here, and their diameter are usually larger than 10 nanometer. For atomic chains filled inside boron nitride nanotubes, their diameter are smaller than 10 nanometer, and we shows that they become n-types in transport nature. This is due to the lifting of the Fermi level of thalidium atomic chains inside boron nitride nanotubes that allow the n-types carrier, which is the electron, to become the kit transport agent of the transistor. You can see from here that n-type transistor are showing higher transport mobility compared to the p-type hole. Our results suggested that thalidium atom chains inside BNNTs are when the wall semiconductors. For example, five atomic chains inside BNNT are two nanometer in diameter. Transistor can be made by these thalidium BNNT heterostructures structures thanks to the electrically insulating nature of the nanotubes that will not interfere the semiconducting nature of the thalidium atoms. Capacity of thalidium BNNT is higher than most semiconductors. So electrically insulating BNNT are the best host materials to encapsulate atomic chains for novel electronics applications. Next, 
I would talk about the uh, last example that I would like to discuss for this talk, which is a biomedicine applications. This is called high brightness fluorophore. Let us take a look into the uh, simple theory of fluorescent intensity. As you can see that fluorescent intensity depends on the excitation laser intensity as well as the uh, molar extension coefficient epsilon and of course it depends on the concentration of the dye of your fluorophore as well as the geometrical excitation length and quantum U of the fluorophore. So as a physicist, we look into numbers as well. So for example, quantum U itself, right, is always range between zero to one, whereas epsilon, which is the molar extinction coefficients, it can be tuned between 10 to power two to 10 to power six, which means if you would like to produce high brightness fluorophore with very high intensity, it is much more cost effective to trying to work on how to in increase the molar extinction coefficients. Let me show you how we use boron nitride nanotubes to enhance the molar extinction coefficients of our fluorophore. We use boron nitride nanotubes as the carrier of a series of dye molecule and an antibody. By doing so, this whole fluorophore will be able to specifically recognize the biomarker on blood cells. The nature of boron nitride nanotubes, including electrically insulating and optically transparent property, can prevent the quenching of this dye molecule. And we can load as many dye or as few dye as we want. And this can be done by non covalent labeling. Since these structures are chemically inert, the high brightness 404 constructed by this manner are biologically compatible. We are using this high brightness 404 for blood cell analysis using the technique so called flow cytometry. As shown here, blood cells consist of many types of biomarkers. In short, we call them cluster of differentiation CD. Here is a brief description about flow cytometry. In this case, blood cells are specifically labeled with fluorophore of different color according to the biomarker that you are interested. Laser light is used to excite all the fluorescent such that all the fluorescent signal on different biomarkers can be collected in the same measurement. By doing so, comparing the intensity of different fluorescent signal, one can quantify the population of different biomarkers on a blood cell sample. Here is an example of flow cytometry data. In this case, first, we measure the fluorescent signal of CD4 as labeled by a commercial available PE dye, which is one of the brightest dye that popular currently being used for flow cytometry. As you can see here, the intensity of the PE dye detector here is about 309. For the case of high brightness dye, the CD4 biomarker is labeled with the high brightness 404, and in this case, the brightness is four times brighter than those of the PE dye. In fact, in this case, we are using 588 times lower dosage of the high brightness 404. This means in a one-to-one -one basis, each high brightness 404 is a couple of thousand times brighter than each PE dye. 
All right. In short, this is the summary. A series of emerging applications have been demonstrated based on the unique electrically insulating, optically transparent properties of oral nitrile nanotubes. So we have discussed about transistor with a semiconductor by gold nanoparticle coated on boron nitride nanotubes. We have also discussed about the discovery of 2D gold quantum dots on boron nitride nanotubes, and they have tunable optical band gap in the visible spectra range. We have also used boron nitride nanotubes as a host material to uh, encapsulate thalidium atomic chains and we found that the electrically insulating boron nitride nanotubes enable the construction of transistor and allow current to flow through the atomic chains without interfering. Last but not least, I have discussed with you about how we make high brightness fluorophore by using dye functionalized boron nitride nanotubes. So all these are based on the unique properties of boron nitride nanotubes, which have been viewed as the negative properties, which is or which are not very useful for conventional applications. But if you think carefully, some of these so-called negative properties at the nanoscale may lead to new discovery or new applications. With this, thank you for your attention.